Hey guys, welcome back. Ashley D. Will here, author, teacher, life coach. I hope everyone is doing well. So today we're going to do part two of God's Peace. I recently did God's Peace part one, and I wanted to just unpack this a little bit more with you for those of you who are sincerely interested in living in God's peace. Okay, so I referenced 2 Peter 1, verses 2 and 3, which says, May God's grace, God's favor, and peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts, be multiplied to you in the full personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, For His divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full and personal knowledge of Him who called us by and to His own glory and excellence and virtue. Okay, I'm reading from the Amplified. So, that's a lot right there, right? So I'm going to try to just keep it simple and to the point and keep on this peace topic. This is so rich with material. Okay, so last time we talked about God's peace and how the scripture that I just read says there are six elements to God's peace. And those elements are, number one, which I just read to you, perfect well-being. Number two, all necessary good. Number three, all spiritual prosperity. Number four, freedom from your fears. Number five, freedom from those agitating passions. And number six, freedom from moral conflict, right? And so the scripture says that these elements of God's peace will be multiplied, multiplied, to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of the Lord. So this is talking about, again, experiential knowledge, experiential knowledge, not head knowledge, okay? So what do we do to get this? Well, the scripture tells us in that uh, those verses, two verses there, that we've already been given this peace. And it tells us this also in the Gospels where Jesus says, my peace I leave with you before he ascended, right? My peace I leave with you. I'm leaving this with you, okay? So what is our job to be able to live in this peace? It is a process, it is gradual, it all depends on your heart, what your priorities are, and so what are you going to do? Well, number one, you're going to ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. You make it a priority. The more of a priority it is in your heart, the more efficiently you will move into this peace and live in this peace. Okay, over time, you will grow into God's peace. You will grow into his peace. Just like if there's an outfit that's a little too big for you and you're waiting to grow up into it. It's kind of like that. The scripture tells us it's yours already. It's already been given to you. Okay, in the, this passage and then in the Gospels where Jesus says, My peace I leave with you. Talked about that in part one, remember? So, it's also like... Think about it like this, like a birthday present. When someone gives you a birthday present, do you just say, oh, that's nice, and you walk away? No. It's your birthday present, and this person has gone out and bought it for you, and it's for you to enjoy and to have. So what do you do? You have to, if you want to enjoy the present, you don't want to enjoy the present go do whatever else you want to do but if you want to enjoy the present especially in its fullness you must take it reach out your hands and take it and you say thank you wow you bought me a present 
and then you sit down and you open it up. You have to get the scissors or tear it open or however you open a package, you have to open it and then you open the box and maybe there's another smaller box inside. You gotta open it up and then if it's a sweater or a bracelet or something like that, you have to put it on. Do you hear all these deeper steps you have to take? Christ said he left his peace with us. The scripture says his peace is ours. And so he's left it with us. So what are we going to do? Go watch Netflix. You know, this goes to the heart priority. That's what I'm always talking about. What is your priority? Why are you here? Are you here to waste your life? Are you here to do the will of God? Okay, so you must take it, verb, you must open it, verb, and you must put it on, verb. These are all action things that you must choose to do with your free will, okay? I can't make you do it. God's not going to arm wrestle you to do it. You have to choose to do it, see? Your will is very powerful, and you're the only one in the universe who has stewardship over that will inside you. And you can do this. Okay, you absolutely can do it. So what else are you going to do? You are going to thank him for his peace. That would be probably the first step, I would say. Thank you, Lord, that you have already given me this peace. I didn't really realize this. You said it in the Gospels. You said it in 2 Peter 1, 2, and 3. And you've given me everything that I need to do the will of God. Wow, that's really incredible. Let me meditate on that for a little while and let it really hit me what this means. So you're agreeing with him in this thanking him, right? That's why I'm always teaching people to give thanks and be thankful for things. Because when you're doing that, you're also agreeing with him. And he loves it when you agree with him. So you're going to thank him for it. You're going to desire it. If you don't really desire it that much, you can ask for the Lord to give you a desire for it. And he will increase that. He'll turn up the intensity in your heart. So then you're going to ask him, Lord, I know you've given me this peace, but I want a personal experiential knowledge of your peace through knowing you. Would you please lead me in that way? And then over time, you're going to learn to receive the peace and abide in it. This is a process, and it's one little baby step at a time, receiving and receiving more and more and more, and then abiding and abiding more and more and more. The more you receive, the more you abide. It's You can receive a little bit and learn to abide in that, then receive a little bit more and learn to abide in that, however it works for you. And then this is a huge point that a lot of people think they want God's peace, but if they're not willing to do number five, they're not going to have much of God's peace. You have to be willing to adjust your life around it. You're wanting something that you don't have. There's a lot of space taken up with your life that is bringing you no peace. So, you're going to have to, if you want the peace to have it and keep it and hold on to it, you're going to have to make some adjustments in your life to be able to keep that peace. Okay? I mean, ultimately, you can have it for a little while and lose it for a long time if you want, but my goal for you would be to have it more and more and more and then to live in it eventually. That would be my goal for you. So if that's what you want, then this video will help you. So you want to adjust your life. This means you adjust your heart. You adjust your relationships. You adjust your schedule. You adjust everything around this peace. Do you know that if you start adjusting your life around God's peace, that you'll be doing more of the will of God because it is his will for you to experience his peace. Okay, and we're going to talk about blockages in just a minute. And then over time, you will make it your default mode. You will make it your default mode. That's the ultimate goal that I would have for you. If I were your life coach, it would take a lot of time, but I would be willing to do that because I want you to have it. Eventually, you would make it your default mode. 
okay? You'll have to go through a lot of different stages and steps and adjustments and things, but it's totally worth it when you look at the chaos and the darkness and the just ugh of this world. It's so yucky. This peace of God is wonderful. And it's the will of God for us to live in the peace of God if we truly belong to him. Okay? Because we're being prepared for heaven. Heaven is the opposite of this world system. So, um, like I mentioned before, you grow into God's peace. It's just like growing into the fact that you are the new nature if you're in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's, a new, he's the new nature, right? Well, just as you really heard that and you thought, wow, I think that might be true. And you started to get your mind around it and then you started to accept it and receive it and then you assumed it was true. That's kind of the same thing. You're going to grow into this new nature and you're going to grow into God's peace and by the way the more you grow into the fact that you are the new nature and you accept that as the real you that will automatically give you more of God's peace see all these little steps I'm giving you are helping you to line up with the Lord it's the Holy Spirit's burden it's not yours your job is just to listen and follow okay so again this is like we mentioned um over here, these things will be multiplied to you in these ways. Well, it's a little bit like multiplication. You start with your single digits, eight times eight, whatever your digits are, and you multiply those, and what do you get? You get double digits. You start with single digits of God's peace, and then as you keep seeking and knocking and doing the things that you're supposed to do, the Holy Spirit will multiply these things to you as He ordains in these ways. So He's working over there with the, um, the pencil and doing the hard work, the math, the, the multiplication. But you're just asking, seeking, knocking, listening, and following. That's what you're doing. The Holy Spirit does the hard work. But you do your part, okay? You're lining up with what's already been given to you so you can experience it. Okay, some blockages are uh, things that will block you from his peace are number one, lies. Okay, lies. The world is filled with lies. We are all filled with lies. We've been believing lies since we were born. So lies are a big deal and they definitely block you from God's peace. And one of the lies the enemy is probably telling you right now is, oh, this whole thing is so unrealistic. You can never have God's peace in this world. Only when you get to heaven, right? That's what he always tells you. It's only possible when you're in heaven, so don't bother with that right now. That is a 100% lie. Number two, not having boundaries will 100% preclude you from enjoying God's peace. Boundaries are a protective measure that you take to protect yourself so that you can heal and do the will of God. Number three is wounds. Wounds are very much painful, agonizing, repetitive, and they keep us stuck in the muck and they keep us in the self-life and in survival mode and we never get to enjoy the good stuff that Christ has for us. So I always encourage everyone to plug into healing uh, modalities and healing communities where you can um, experience some healing uh, for your wounds. Number four is busyness. Busy, 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 busy. Is anyone teaching you that you should always be busy? Well, that is not the Holy Spirit. That is another spirit from another gospel. All these distractions in life They're everywhere, especially in the media, everywhere. Just arrows aimed at you. Bam, 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 bam. And a lot of y'all just sit there and go, oh, 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 and you don't realize, I don't have to do this. I can remove myself from this situation. When you are distracted by all these things in that place, 
in those places, you're not doing the will of God. You're not healing. You're not using boundaries. Okay, so just know busyness and distractions are a, a classic tool of the enemy. Number five is beams in your eyes. Beams in your eyes can come from wounds in your heart. Beams in your eyes can come from just your own uh, blindness to things. It can come from lies you believe, and they can come from a lot of different, like the way you were raised to believe this thing, and it's not even true. That's a beam in your eye. So through mind renewal and through healing, you can get the beams removed from your eyes. Okay? Number six is slavery. Slavery is what Christ came to save us from. He came to set us free. He wants us walking around in freedom. Freedom to go over here. Freedom to go over there. We're not meant to be bound up. That is not his will. But we all start out that way, don't we? So let him set you free. Let him break your chains. If you've come to Christ, your chains are really already broken, technically. But you have to go through some things to experience that. Uh, number seven would be toxic exposure. Okay? Anything toxic you want to eventually eliminate from your life. If you can't, you want to minimize it or reduce it. Exposure to toxic people. If you're in an environment where there are toxic people, you can remove yourself from that environment sometimes. Sometimes you can't. You have to get coping skills and learn boundaries and all that. With media, media can be very toxic. Your thoughts, your own thoughts inside your own head can be very toxic. And you can have toxic food. You can be eating toxic food and really be slowly poisoning yourself. So you want to have boundaries here around your life. Okay, here's your life and you want boundaries around it. And you want the toxic things one at a time over time to be, you're gonna be getting rid of those. And then you're gonna be bringing in the good things into your life, okay? So exposure to toxic people, media, thoughts, food, can block you from his peace. Number eight, internalization of worthless thoughts and or ideas. What I mean by internalization is, say you were watching something in the media or you were talking with a person and you took those words or those images and you kept them inside you and you kept ruminating on them and you let them settle in your heart. Maybe something that someone said to you that was not kind or was critical or rude. You're taking it in and you're making it a part of your inner world. That's internalization. So you don't want to do that in general. If you have a habit of doing it, you want to stop doing that and leaving the words that other people say in their hula hoop. Those weren't my words. I didn't say those words. I didn't do that. That is her or his business. See, you want there to be separateness between you and other people so you're not dragging around everybody else's garbage with you everywhere you go. So you're not a garbage can. You don't need to drag everybody else's garbage around with you. That's not a good thing to do. It's a toxic habit. Number nine is huge. Um... Refusing to live a set-apart life or and or trying to be friends with the world, the world system. James 4.4 4 tells us that if we are friends with the world system, we are enemies of God. We automatically declare ourselves enemies of God if we are friends with the world. So when you live a set-apart life, that is you agreeing with God that he is holy and if you belong to him then you are holy see that is how you line up with the Lord is you agree yes you are holy and I'm in Christ if Christ is holy then that means I'm holy because I'm in him 
I'm not in myself anymore. I'm in Jesus Christ. So that means I'm holy. So when you agree that you are holy, you're agreeing that you are set apart from this world system. That's what holy means. It means you are set apart. Set apart. You've been taken out of the world system and you've been put into Christ. So he has a plan for you. So if you're not living a set apart holy life, you're fighting God. You're fighting God because he says he is holy. You belong to him and he says you are holy if you belong to him. So you want to line up with the Lord on this holiness issue and being set apart. That really shows the whole world and the spirit world and the Lord and yourself whose side you're on. I'm not kind of flailing around in the mud or rolling around in the gutter of the world system. I belong to the Lord and I'm going to line up with him and he has me called me to live a holy set apart life. And then number 10, fighting God. Anything you do where you're resisting him, you're resisting him and you are not open to line up with him and kind of bending into him and leaning into him and, and wanting more of him, you're fighting God in those areas. So some of those areas may need healing. Some of those areas may need mind renewal. You know, these can be related to fighting God, but fighting God can also just be a totally separate issue. Okay, so the last few points I wanted to make in this video are you are to follow his leading, okay? He's leading you. He's the shepherd. You're the sheep. He doesn't follow you. You follow him. Okay? So don't go around living your life and assuming that he's following you, that you're God and he's not, and you're wondering why you have no peace. Well, he's saying, oh, you think you're God? Go for it. Now see how much peace you have with that mentality. <laughs> see, it doesn't work that way. The sheep follow the shepherd. All right? Also, the shepherd, the good shepherd, is the only prince of peace. The prince of peace is the only one in the entire universe who has this peace that we want. He's the only one that has it. You don't have it. I don't have it. No one has it. Only Jesus Christ, the living, risen Jesus Christ. He's got it all. So if you want his peace, you have to follow him to get his peace. He and his peace are not separate. They're one and the same. So you must follow him to have his peace because he's the only one that has the peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And then you're going to make exchanges. And what I mean by that is, what did I say here? Uh, oh, yeah. For example, if you want peace, but you're not willing to give up your habit of watching horror movies, then you're not going to have his peace, are you? If you want his peace and you're not willing to give up your longtime habit of antagonizing people, then you're probably not going to have his peace. If you want his peace and you're not willing to shift your schedule a little bit so you're not staying up all night and you're feeling like a wreck first thing in the morning when you wake up, then you're probably not going to have his peace. You're sabotaging yourself in a lot of ways. And so I'm just saying, make these exchanges. Uh, be willing to shift things in your life and be adaptable, right? For example, I said, if you're not willing to give up your habit of horror movies, that goes to things that you expose yourself to. Be open to him shifting the things you expose yourself to in order to have his peace or more of his peace. The second example was antagonizing people. That has to do with relationships. Be willing to make little shifts or adaptations in relationships so that you can have more of his peace. And lastly, the example of staying up really late at night, that goes to time, time management, time choices. Be willing to adjust or adapt your time choices and time management to be able to have more of his peace. That 
is what I'm talking about, about making exchanges. Exchange the bad that's already in your life that's blocking you from peace that you want and exchange that for the good. And he will show you what the good is. You can list to him the things you want to, you're willing to give up, but he will show you, okay, what about this idea instead? Okay, that's just an example, but it's um, all encompassing. It will have to do with your entire life. So just be open to what he's showing you, okay? When you fight against God, then you're blocking yourself from all the good stuff. He's got all the good stuff. He's got it all. So when you're fighting him, you're blocking yourself from the good things that you want. That's why I always teach you to line up with the Lord. Line up with the Lord. It's necessary to let go of the things that are blocking you and keeping you out of alignment in order to line up with him and to have his peace. So our prayer is, Lord, my life is definitely lacking your peace. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with the way my life is becoming and I'm ready to make changes to grow to experience your peace more and more. I desire your peace. I'm willing to do what is necessary to live in your peace. Please make me willing where I may not be willing. I acknowledge that I need the Holy Spirit to teach me to live in this peace of yours. Thank you for your peace that you have given me. I desire to receive it and I do receive it right now in Jesus name. Help me to learn to receive it now and moment by moment as I abide in you as you teach me. Teach me also to set myself apart from this evil world. Teach me to hold on to your peace in this chaotic, unpredictable world. I trust you and thank you for helping me in this quest for your peace in Jesus' name. So that's our prayer, and I hope that that is helpful. I hope that you are sincere about your desire for God's peace because he's sincere about wanting you to have it. So if you're sincere about learning about it, receiving it, abiding in it, making it your default mode, he is all over that. He loves it. He loves it when you thank him and he loves it when you agree with him. Okay, so you guys have a blessed day and I will see you in the next video.